Here, I'll show you how to deconstruct complex formulas in Excel so that you understand exactly what's going on and what it does. I'll show you a simple yet robust method for taking apart any formula or function so that you can go from something really complex like this to all of its little individual pieces down here and know exactly what's happening. Now this tutorial is part of a larger tutorial I did not that long ago, but I thought it was important enough to break it out into its own little tutorial. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Here we have a formula that gets the last segment from a cell, but it does it in a dynamic way. So it doesn't matter how many delimiters we have or how many segments or sections, it'll always get the last one. And so yes, we could use F9 to go through parts of this to see what's going on with, let's say, substitute right here. And maybe that'll be good enough for you. Or we could select it and go to evaluate formula. And maybe you're going to understand it from here, although I doubt it because <laughs> it kind of runs through it in a confusing way. But you could try those. However, let's go through it a much, much, much better way. It takes a lot longer, but should help you understand it. So we select the cell here. And what we want to do is start from outside to inside. Now this formula comes from a tutorial that I did called Five Helpful Text Extraction Tips. And in that tutorial, I tell you to start from inside to out. However, that is because I also explain how everything should work beforehand. But if you're getting a formula where you don't really know what's going on, then it's not going to work going inside to out. It's going to be terrifically confusing. So in this case, starting from scratch, we want to go outside to in. And the first thing that we notice is a right formula. So we can click the formula or just put the cursor in it and see that it has only two arguments, a text argument and a number of characters argument. So the text where we want to get some text from the right of and how many characters from the right of it we want to actually get. So it only has two segments, this segment right here and this segment right here. And what we want to do is to start to break them out. So let's break out the first segment equals A3. Okay, so that's a bunch of text. We could make it bigger if we wanted. And now let's get the second segment, a much more confusing segment. And if you fail to copy all of the parentheses here, don't worry, Excel will happily correct you or will tell you it should be corrected. Now we can see that the right function gets this and three. So that's how it gets the last three characters, because it's told to do so. But now let's break down this guy, because this is where it gets really confusing. So this guy only has two parts as well. We have a count of how many characters is in the cell. And if you don't know what any of these functions mean, just click one of them, and then click right here, where it's highlighted in blue. Click the name of the function, and it'll pop up a help window that'll tell you what it does. So this one's going to get the length the number of characters in the cell. So I'm going to hit escape, go down here, and pop that in right here. Now let's get the second section, this section right here, all of this stuff. Copy that in, pull it out here, equals, and pop it in there. So let's take a look at this guy. Here we have the find function. And this will find a certain character within text and return the number, the position where it found that character. So the first position, second position, third position, and so on. But here we have, for the text, we want to find this funky little bar. Now, I do not, in cell A3, find a funky little bar. So what's going on? Well, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I understand what this means. This means find the funky little bar, OK? And let's see, that's the first argument. And then we have a within text argument and a start number argument. Now, easy way to see how many arguments we have in this is to go to the very last parentheses and click right inside of it. That way, we're still within the find function, just at the very end. And we can see that the last argument is the within text argument. That means that all of this is one argument, one thing. It returns one value to the find function. Let's copy that, hit escape, scroll over, 
and let's put that guy right down here equals substitute and there we see our funky little bar the funky bar that we look for up here and actually before I continue let's remember that this 3 right here is the length minus the result of the find so we have the length here and find here so let's go ahead and quickly make the result here equals 13 minus 10 so 3 here, 3 here, perfect. Now scroll over, OK. Substitute will replace one character with another character. Easy peasy. So what text do we want to use to replace a character in? Right here, cell A3. What do we want to replace? We want to replace a dash with what? A bar. OK, so I'm starting to see where we get the bar from. We replace a dash with a bar. And now we have another argument for substitute, which is instance number. Which occurrence of this character do I want to replace? So now we have to figure out which dash do we replace. OK, so we have more stuff. Copy this. Go down here, equals that. OK, 4. So I want to replace the fourth instance. How do I get the fourth instance? OK, we have the length of the cell again. I think you can see where this is going, so maybe I'll speed it up just a little bit. And now we have this funky little dude. Copy it out here. Equal sign in front. I forgot a parentheses. It is correcting me. Yes, accept correction. Now we have equals 13 minus 9, which equals 4. Perfect. Now here we have the length of the cell again. Don't exactly understand why we have that there yet, but that's because we don't understand what this does. This is the length. We get the length of what, though? Let's get this out of here and see what the heck we're dealing with. Wow, OK. So now here I have cell A3, but without any dashes. So I go in here, and I can see we substituted, using the text cell A3, all of the dashes with nothing, with an empty space. So what we then did is we fed that back to a len function to count the number of characters in it. So here we have the number of characters without any dashes. It counts this value right here. And since we got to the end of it, there's nothing else to look into. Well, you could look in A3, but we know what A3 is. There's nothing else to look into. We have fully deconstructed the entire formula. We are ready to now put all the pieces back together to figure out what's going on. So this is A3 without any dashes. We feed it back up into here, into the len function to count that. We get a 9. Here, we count how many characters are in the cell total with dashes, 13. That gives us 4. That tells us there are 4 dashes. Perfect. Now we got this number. Now we know there are 4 dashes. We want to replace the very last dash with a bar. So we use the substitute function. And we want to replace the last dash, which is the fourth dash, which we get from this. So that's how we get the last dash right here replaced with a bar. Then we go back up here and we count the position of the bar. We find out where it is in the cell. So you can see here, if we count, we get 10 by the time we get to here. Then all we do is get a count of the total characters in the cell again, subtract 10 by that, and that tells us that there are only three characters at the end of the cell. Then we can feed that back up here, the three, into the right function. So this right here, if I select it and hit F9, is three. So this is what the right function sees. And then we select A3. And now we can get the last three characters from this set of text. B, B, B. Now the one part of this that might still seem confusing is what's up with the bar? What's up with this guy down here? Why did I use a bar? Well, you need to know how the find function works. So if you don't know that, just click in here, click in find, and then click find right there. And you can read how it works. It finds the first occurrence after the start number that's provided, or just from the start of the cell if you don't give it that. So what we want to do is we want to give it a unique character that will never be in the cell so that we can easily find it using the find function. 
So yes, that might not be obvious when you go through the deconstructing process, but when you figure out what the functions mean, then you should kind of start to piece together, okay, so it should be something that can be easily found but not found anywhere else in the cell, only found where I substituted it in using the substitute function. So a unique character, basically. And you can see that it can take a while to fully deconstruct a formula. But that's how you learn how everything works, how all the pieces go together. So basically, this formula right here is all of this combined. And that's all for this tutorial. I hope you're able to follow it and learn a useful method for understanding and deconstructing complex formulas in Microsoft Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.